Uh, it's nice to talk about West Bromwich Albion though at the moment. You're flying one defeat in seven. Um, yeah. Nine, 19 game, points from 11 games, I've just been told. You know, eight undefeated at home. So we're in a good run of form. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been pleasing. We've played really well in those games as well. You know, we've looked at team. So we need to keep it going. Nine games to go. Um, obviously, the confidence in the club is, is sky high at the moment. We know Saturday it's going to be a tough game. Norwich are obviously fighting for their lives. No easy games in the Premiership. So we just got to make sure that everybody stays very, very grounded and we continue the work, the hard work that we've put in. You, you've talked all season, you always do, and I know you say this to the players as well, about that magic 40-point mark. You're one point away from that, potentially with eight games to play, if you do it. That would be some achievement, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I, well, you know, we're... we're we're delighted, and it, it takes the pressure off you a little bit, Rob, as well, which is, uh, which is, you know, it, it's massive in the, in the Premiership. Um, and then when you look at the, uh, you know, the teams down there, and the teams scrapping away and fighting, you know, it just makes you uh, uh, makes you more aware of how tough this league is. You know, the likes of Aston Villa, Sunderland, Newcastle. Just mentioned those three, massive, massive clubs. So we're pleased to be in a position we're in at the moment, but obviously we want to push on. As you say, nine games to go, try and get as many points as we can. 11th at the moment, is top 10 achievable? That would be incredible. No, the, the, the thing is achievable is can we get three points against Norwich? That, that's the most important thing. I don't think we, as I said before, um, as a manager in this league, you should never get too despondent or too high. You know, the, the, the most important thing is you keep your feet on the ground and you keep ploughing through. And uh, the next game is the important game. The next game is the game we have to focus on. And we all show Norwich the same respect as we've shown Manchester United in the last home game. You probably appreciate that the fans are talking about this. That the record points total that Albion have ever had in the Premier League is 49. That's doable. It, it'd be uh, closer if, if we could win the game on Saturday. That's the best way of putting it. OK, look, now you've, you've said that Albion have suffered from not having Barahino for three months of the season. It looks like him and Rondon have really formed a, a heck of a partnership now. Since he's come back seven points out of nine as well, that, that speaks volumes about the run of form you're in, doesn't it? Is that yeah, it's, well, obviously, Sido helps, and, and Sido's been a great miss, and you know, we, we I think people are starting to recognise how big a miss he's been. Um, but his attitude's been good, um, and everybody, I think the... the you know, the situation in the room, everybody has been delighted with his performances, but also what he's brought to the dressing room as well. As I say... He's a young lad who's had his head turned a few times. Um, I think he would do it differently, Rob, if it happened again. Um, but it's experience, and, and as a youngster, you know you don't uh, you have to uh, learn all the, the you know the arts and all the the, the the slippery slopes that can and and are put in front of you. And he's um, he's slipped down a few times, but he you know he's he's a big boy. He understands the situation. He understands where he is at the moment. And, um, you know, fingers crossed he'll continue playing as well as he's played. I'm guessing you'd like to keep him beyond the summer now, though, because it's showing this partnership with him and Rondon. It would show that if they had a full season together, a full pre-season next summer, it could be great for next season, couldn't it? You... I'm just hoping he plays well against Norwich. <laughs> Saturday. Never mind, see... any, never mind anything else. I think the most important thing, Rob, is that we focus on the next next game and Sido keeps his feet on the ground and keeps focused Um you know, and I'm sure come the end of the season, everybody will be talking about Sido again and where he's going. But you know, give us a break for at least the next nine games. That's fair enough. Um, you, you, it's a bit of a stop-start sort of time of the season for you. you. Missed last weekend because of the FA Cup. You've got the international break coming up as well. Does that I, well one does that one thing that has disappointed me, and I think it's gone and un, un, mentioned, it's Easter week next week, and there's no football. Unbelievable. You know, as a traditionalist and someone who. Um, was brought up with football on Friday, Saturday, and Monday, Easter Monday as well. You know, it's it's just it's just amazing, and um, you know they've managed to, you know, sneak it through without anybody talking about it. And for a a football nation, who I think has the greatest traditions in the world, um, for for the Premier League and the FA to have snuck it in without anybody talking about, um, congratulations to them. But really disappointing for me as a as a football man and a football person because you know Christmas and Easter are the greatest times in English football for for games and supporters enjoy it they come out in their numbers and it's really really is disappointing that uh, you know they they're off 
play in international friendly matches when they should be, or personally, they should be home playing football over Christmas, over Easter, sorry, um, for the supporters. You'll probably be the only manager moaning that they haven't got a game and moaning, and moaning that you've got Easter. I, I, I just, as I say, I love the Christmas programme, I love the Easter programme, that's me. You know, I'm, I'm, no one will take any notice of me, Rob. Um, because of health and safety and players can do this and players can do this and you know all this nonsense that goes on but you know I love it I, I, you know that those Christmas periods uh, Easter periods you get big crowds you know back to back games players have to play under enormous um, you know uh, difficult conditions at times but they get through it and the excitement that, you know that's generated um, and how unusual sometimes the results can be because of it. All mixes into this being the greatest league in the world. Good stuff. Um, we spoke to Chris Brunt this week, um, and how much it means to him and how much he's lost because of this became very, very evident. It's it's really hit the lad hard, hasn't it? I wonder whether. Yeah, I've had a chat with Brunt. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that he'll go over there. I think. Um, uh, Michael has in, in, invited him over so he can be with the Irish squad. I think he wants to go over and watch some of the games, but not be there all the time. I think he might do a bit of media work over there, which would, which would be brilliant for Chris as well. Um, but we all have ups and downs in in life, and and Chris has been very fortunate in lots of respects, in 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 that way of injuries. This has been a massive blow for him. Um, but you know, when you look at his career, he's had a fantastic career. He's been brilliant for this football club. This football club's been brilliant for him. And, um, yeah, it's really disappointing for everybody that he's not playing and disappointing for his family and for his country. Um, but Chris has to bounce back and, and make sure he's ready for pre-season. I've told him those hills are waiting for him in Austria. He's 31 now. Do you think he'll play for his country again? Oh, he's a fit lad, Brunty. He's a bit like Gareth, um, you know, Gareth McCauley. Gareth is an extraordinary fit lad for his age. And Brunty's a fit lad. If you have a look at uh, at Brunty's fitness levels and fitness stats during the season, he's um, he's always up in the top three or four players at this football club. So I don't see there being any problems with uh, with Chris coming back um, and you know really really pushing on again. You mentioned Gareth. There. I was going to ask you about him because he, if he, if he plays, if you play him at the weekend, he could become Albion's oldest ever outfield player. That, that and that and that could continue, you know, into into next year. You know, I think the club are in discussions with him. He's been fantastic, Rob. And like I say, his fitness levels, you know, it's, it's extraordinary. He looks after himself very, very well. He didn't come into football till later in his career, so that's most probably helped a little bit. But you know, we're in an era now where we we know what keeps the human body going, and we know what um, what it needs to keep going. And he looks after himself, you know, and uh, he's a great professional, great lad to have around. They're finally on Norwich. No win in ten for them. They're fighting for their lives, aren't they? Oh, cheers, Rob. Um, <laughs> no, they're, they're you know they're, they're a tough team. They've uh, the games that we've watched, they play very well in. Um, but you need the breaks at times, and they haven't had the breaks. And I hope and pray they don't get the breaks on Saturday. I mean, look, you, when you've brought Stoke City into the Premier League, you know what it can be like coming into that first season. It's it's tough, isn't it? And everything is a new challenge for you. Or was it eight, nine years I've been doing it, Rob? It's tough every year. It wasn't just tough the first year. It's tough every year. Um, yeah, they've got, they've got a, as you know. I, I keep saying, you know, the manager is important because he's got to stay level, and he's got to keep picking his troops up and marching them forward. And uh, irrespective of um, all the battles you fight, at the end of the day, it's who wins the war. And um, you'll lose a lot of battles along the way, but if you can come out the, the other end of it, um, then you know it's it's a fantastic achievement, and it'll be a fantastic achievement for him. Any team you saw saying they're Um yeah, we got a, you know obviously Morrison's still um, not fit, which is a disappointment. We'd put him down for this game, um, one or two other knocks and niggles, but we're hoping and praying that uh, you know we, we'll be able to pick as close a team as we possibly can. Thanks.